there and welcome back to the Natalie and Dennis show podcast. podcast. Hey, what's up, people? <laughs> oh, I just noticed you have something in your tooth. Do I? Let oh, who you. cares? Because it's brass summer. <laughs> yeah. Ew. I'm Ew. so excited for so today's there. Thank episode. you, Natalie. I'm so excited. Why are you, why are you excited? Are you a brat? <laughs> I can be. What about and you, Natalie? As, you the, as a Gen Z consultant, I'm very excited about this. I'm not going to lie. I don't know what Brat Summer means, and I put it on my recent thumbnail. <laughs> 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 I just saw it rolling around. I, I kind of know, like, yes, it's like the new hot girl summer, but somebody. It's like you're trying new, to be a bad bitch. Somebody new coined it. That's what I'm getting from yes, it. Yes. And so. Don't these sunglasses give off bad bitch? Yeah, bad girl. They're my sunglasses for clarification. So Gen Z consultant, give us a definition of brat girl summer. Is it similar to hot girl summer? Yes, but more like, like, do you know brat versus Barbie? Like the vibe, yes. the energy that that brats give. Ooh, totally. Yeah. Like it's a brat girl summer oh. rather than it's a little different than hot girl summer but it's still a hot girl summer I, just bratty yeah can i ask though mm, I like that. that one chick that sings espresso um sabrina, sabrina carpenter, carpenter. Mm -hmm. she gives barbie does yeah, she okay. not she gives a cunty barbie it's different oh, oh interesting it's very different it's so like i love no she gives brat can, can you give me no, she's brat who gives barbie wait can you energy? explain this like what is this yeah i'm so confused now and who, who gives barbie it is it's like it's almost as if barbie's not good it is it's also just that i mean historically speaking yeah. barbie like just fits a lot more of like the gender norms and like if you watched the barbie movie it's like the whole monologue was like women have to do this and women have to do that and like i don't know barbie always kind of embodied that mm -hmm. and back in the day brat was like the different and i've seen a lot of memes and things on instagram that are like um you can tell when brat was barbie's number one competitor because her outfit changed like she was giving more brat vibes You're rather right. than barbie mm. yeah so barbie got bratified for a for a time for a and little then, bit for a little bit and then brat kind of went downhill they mellowed out they mellowed out and the Barbie came back. Mm -hmm. So explain to me why this really uh, interesting situation is going on with the pres presidential election. Uh, obviously, Kamala Harris is a new uh, nominee, but, you know, they're really leaning into the whole brat summer. Yeah, because she has a great marketing team. Whoever is running that, whoever is running her TikTok, hilarious. <gasps> great job. Look at it. Oh, huh. my God. I, it comes up on my For You page. I don't even have to look it up. It just wow. comes up on my page. And she. So from my understanding, mm -hmm. on the first day that she became nominee, they raised a hundred million dollars and they went straight into social media. Like they really, really are going hard. So they rebranded their entire Twitter account mm -hmm. from Biden HQ to Camel HQ. All their accounts. With like weird fonts. And they also changed their banner to be that green from that Brat album. So it's wow. the same green as the as the singer. And they're really leaning into all of these TikTok trends and just girly trends. That's so awesome. I haven't kept up, but honestly, like I think it's kind of bold mm -hmm. one, for especially for a presidential election yeah. type of thing. You you would think something more serious, but wow, I'm I'm very intrigued. Now I have to look into all this. So originally for Joe Biden, they tried something similar. They called him Dark Brandon. And that was leaning into the joke that Republicans had about him. And he was like super about ice cream. It was kind of a little bit cringy. It was actually not too on point mm -hmm. with like current meme culture. Because I feel like right now girls are better at memeing than men. That's in my personal opinion. And the trends are being dictated by women right now. Right. And so, for example, you go on TikTok, you do your research to figure out what content to create. You're not really looking for men. You're looking at other women and like they create new trends that are going on all the time. So as a nominee, being a woman, in my opinion, she's already off to a really great start because mm -hmm. she understands and her people surrounding her understand. And they're creating a wave via these trends for her. Very she knows what demographics she needs to speak to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So before the show even started, I was telling you guys about how a large portion of boomers died 
right after they voted for Trump between 2016 and 2024. <laughs> right you make it seem like because <laughs> they voted, they all die. Well, I mean, like they, they <laughs> death know. sentence, boom, signed they away know. their life. Oh but anyways, <laughs> a lot of them are gone and they're being replaced by Gen Z. And that's why I found it so interesting. I wanted to center this entire <laughs> podcast around like three things, uh, three things that I wanted this podcast to be about. Yeah. Gen Z voting and just Gen Z culture in general in terms of this next election, which they're all going to participate in now. Uh, the fact that Camel is a uh, female, a woman, and how she can like really lean into that, which old man Trump can't, which he is now the oldest nominee in American history, oh, right? Wow, because, because Biden dropped out. How so now it. Trump yeah. is now the old guy. And I don't know, just the current state of like, I feel like all social medias are like being flipped around and moved around and all these trends are shifting. And, you know, the whole brat summer, hot girl summer, it's like these time periods in the year. I know that, nothing ever stays the same. Yeah. Especially mm-hmm. online. Things are changing so, 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 so quickly. Like even me. I think it's interesting people. I mean, yes, I guess I am OG. I am OG. I am. But it's mm-hmm. so interesting. It's like in a, in my career, if this was any other career, I'd still be like at the bottom, if that makes sense, because 10 years is not a long time. But in Internet years, it's so much more. So there are a lot of like new eras, if you will. Natalie is mother. <laughs> I am a mother. Which Natalie is, is, which is it, another term that's uh, very popular. It's a Gen Z term. You're your mother. mother. You're mothering. Yeah. You stay mothering. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So All my children. <laughs> let, let's start the topic about the fact that one candidate is a man and the other one is a woman. And we don't even have to say their names. Mm-hmm. Right. What what benefits him and what benefits her and how are they manipulating or using their benefits to each of their advantages and also their ages. How is it, how are their ages affecting the way that they're being seen now? So I can start very, very briefly and then we can all just talk about it very quickly. Uh, not quickly though, cause it is a main topic. Um, so in general, she looks so much better because of her age. She just looks like a better candidate at this particular moment in time. Especially seeing as we only had two old options. Like she beats them completely. She looks like the more prepared person for the job, Mm -hmm. in my opinion. I don't know how you guys feel about age in terms of the candidates. I agree. I've been waiting for, I mean, there are other candidates, but like Dennis was telling me today, don't throw away your vote when they're like, it's clearly down to to the two parties, you know? And where was I going with that? Oh yeah. I was waiting for someone that doesn't look like they're dying or on the verge of death to run for president. Because why do we have people on the verge of death running our country? So how old are you, Serena? 22. So this is the first time or second time you're going to vote? Third. Third time you're going to vote. So you, you, you could vote since 18, right? Yeah. So I voted in 2020. I voted. What's wait. 2016. <laughs> How did you vote in 2016? Were you 20? Were you 18 years old? Maybe I have only voted twice. I think you've only voted twice for the presidential election. I think yeah. I'm also getting it mixed up with yeah. like smaller elections, so you were, like local elections. You are dead in the middle of the age gap for Gen Z, or would you say you're like in the older range or younger range? I think I'm on. What is the youngest Gen Z? Yeah. yeah. I would say a Gen Zer right now, the youngest would maybe be like 15, 16. Really? That's just my opinion. Or would that, that's not Gen Alpha or is it even younger? I don't know. Actually, that yeah, I feel young. like they are on the end really? of Gen Z just yeah. because I feel like they were, they're definitely not Gen Alpha. They're definitely not. So I feel like mm-hmm. I'm on, in that case, I feel like I'm on the older mid side of gen z. i would say gen z right now is people that are older than 13 maybe mm-hmm. that that Definitely not, could, 13. not thir- 13 i don't even think 13 is gen z anymore no or nor nor yeah. nor so that's why i'm saying a big portion of this new voting group is gen z that's entering right so age is one thing and honestly it doesn't even fit today's topic but yeah. the gender to me matters because the last time was Hillary Clinton mm-hmm. and she was very unpopular among people. And that's why she wasn't, she wasn't liked. Mm-hmm. I think that that's why they, you know, she ended up losing. But 
leaning into all these trends, the hot girl summers, the coconut thing, which she actually talked about. What's the which, coconut thing? We'll tell, do you, do you know how to so get into it? <laughs> it's, it's cool because we're informing you about I it. I know. That's crazy. As oh. we're talking to them and maybe even informing them about it. Can I borrow the glasses? Actually, I was telling them before the podcast, I'm feeling a little antisocial today. So I'm letting them kind of run it. It's all these gender things. Mm -hmm. All right, Sabina, you want to explain the coconut thing or you want me to explain the coconut thing? I think you got it. The coconut thing is basically, I don't even know where she was speaking because Dennis actually researched this before, Who obviously, Kamala Kam Kam Harris. Harris. Mm -hmm. So um, Dennis actually researched this before the episode. I just kind of came and sat down. So the coconut thing is basically um, one day at a speech, she was like, we didn't just fall out of a coconut tree one day. Yeah. Like we all... And I forgot the second phrase so that she, she said. She said, we all, we didn't just fall out of a coconut tree. We came from somewhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. That's kind of like what her line of conversation went. And then it ended up being like this whole ass meme that is now going with her. And so yeah. if you see a coconut emoji now, oh. it is, it means that they're referring to her as coconut lady or the whole coconut. We're not coconuts or, or stuff like that. Huh. So they're owning an emoji, right? Which is the coconut. And then they're also characterizing her as this is her moment. Oh, like wow. this is her summer. Wow. Right. Okay, I like that. To the point where all of these news people are also having to start to inform themselves about, about what, that, what means. that means. You know, speaking of what that means, uh, I was chatting it up with uh, Alicia Marie. And so she was telling me how, sorry, my friend just texted me and I thought this was on. Do not disturb. Please it's all don't good. remove. Don't worry about it. Ugh, I don't know how to remove it. Do not disturb. There you go. Because you know how Liza texts. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so um, anyway, so she was telling me uh, oh, she posted on her stories like, what does this mean? Apparently, everybody was commenting Ray-Bans, Ray-Bans, Ray-Bans. And it feels like an insult. What does that mean? In so, I mean do you understand do you it? I don't know what that means. It's giving Gen Alpha. Oh. I was about to say that, too. It's giving Gen Alpha. But it didn't, it was like very, it felt insulting. It's like, are you sure you want the, you're not supposed to be wearing the Ray-Bans or like something like that. You see, when I saw that, I thought she was actually wearing Ray-Bans in the thing that they were commenting on. Oh, you saw the video? That no. She, oh, okay, okay. No, I just saw like the story post. Well, oh, yeah, was yeah, she yeah. wearing Ray-Bans? No, that's why she's like, I don't understand what's happening. Here. Okay, now the dots are clicking, but I, I yeah. do think that's a younger generation. Thing. Oh, interesting. But it mm. feels like an insult. Interesting is that it. the whole trend thing in terms of presidential elections can also be hit and miss because if it's a if it's a trend, it's a flop and most people don't understand it. Yeah. Then it's not going to hit the right target demographic or maybe it will, you know, maybe. just because that specific group can understand it. Do you guys think that these trends are going to give her a lot of momentum in terms of popularity. Yes. And then is is it do you believe it's strong enough to allow her to become president? We don't know. Right? I have no it, idea. Honestly, because only if Gen Z shows up mm -hmm. for votes. That's what really matters. Like you can talk the talk, but are you gonna show up and mm -hmm. vote? That's what matters. Okay. <laughs> Did you guys know you can sign up to vote on Snapchat? What the oh, hell? Oh, that's so You can register on Snapchat. I mean, I know you wow. I I right, I know you could in the 2020 election. I haven't been on Snapchat in a while, but I'm wow. assuming if they did it for the 2020 election, they would do it for the 2024 so election. Just right off the bat, I feel like the the podcast this whole podcast is starting off chaotic because we don't each know or understand all the trends that are going on. Mm -hmm. Like I'll say a trend and then I'm like I have to stop and like explain it. And then like Sabina might say something and then she has to explain it to us, right? right? So th this whole presidential election is going through a, a period of time. Era. Or era that I think no other election has gone through. From my understanding, the last time that Trump actually won, TikTok didn't exist. Mm, interesting. Right? TikTok wasn't even a thing. And so all of these like era moments with like female empowerment, like feminine on and on thing going on. That's another trend. What is that one? Tell me. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So say we're going. Say it again. No, wait. Say Femi it again. Feminine on and on. Feminine on and on. But what we really need is a feminine on and on. So what is this? So basically Chapel Rowan, Slay Chapel Rowan. Who is she? She is an artist. 
Um, she was an opener for Olivia Rodrigo on the first leg of her tour. She also uh, was background vocals for Taylor Swift. Don't wow. quote me on that one. But I'm pretty sure she had the same um, wow. agency for a while as her. I Don't quote me, guys. She's been killing the game. She's been killing the yeah. game recently. She recently blew up. She went to GovBall. And um, <laughs> she's just iconic. Iconic. She's iconic. <laughs> Two million subs on TikTok, by the way. She actually came out with the album that is like has feminine phenomenon on it a while ago, but it only recently blew up um, because <laughs> of the recent popularity that she's had. Cause of, I don't even like, it was like a while ago that the album came out, but basically um, she's just like, we needed more feminine icons mm. and Cam Love Harris is now becoming a feminine icon. So does that song associate with her? Are they associating? So, her? okay. Along those lines, every single time that Camilla has been connected to a song, the artist doesn't mind that she uses it. Okay. So she actually came out to us Beyonce song mm -hmm. because Beyonce's mom let her use it. It wasn't even Beyonce. Her mom let her use it. Dang. Okay. That's how much people are liking her. Mm -hmm. Right. Then she used a song by a girl called Charlie XCX. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then she let her use it too. And now this feminine phenomenon thing is also going on and they're also allowing. So a lot of these female also Taylor Swift, by the way. I know, Dennis, wait. Go ahead. Another fun fact, Chapel Rowland, she dressed up as Lady Liberty for GovBall and she said on stage, I was asked to go sing at the White House and I said no because um, they don't respect my rights, so why am I going to respect them? Oh, mm. interesting. Yes. So. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> this is also the first election after the whole Roe v. Wade thing where they, you know, attacked abortion. So this is a very male versus female election is kind of how it's panning out. Hmm. And it's also a very multicultural versus the typical white politician. Now, uh, what do you call it? Presidential election. Mm -hmm. It's very, very new. And it's very, you know, changing the landscape of politics. Mm -hmm. I don't know, though, if I agree with the whole like male versus female. I Perhaps, agree, Natalie. Right. Perhaps there's like, yes, that element of amazing. She's like the, she could be the first woman mm -hmm. president and all that. But I do feel like, I mean, in different, I mean, aside from like what your sex is, Donald Trump carries a lot of uh, negative weight. And so some people might just argue anybody but him. That yes. is a big <laughs> argument. That is a big argument. So from videos that I've seen, the first time that he won, he was kind of an unknown and no one really knew what he was going to do. This is the first time that he's going for re-election after already being a president. So people have more of an idea about how he will be. A lot of people that originally voted for him the first time was like, I, we just want something different. Mm -hmm. So he has a lot of stuff that's not going well for him, including the age including the he's the typical person that's normally a president, male, white, whatever. Yeah. Uh, he has a lot of things not going well for him. And she feels like a breath of fresh air, even though she was already vice president. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that leads into another topic. It's, this is off politics now. This is a different topic, but it is still gender oriented. Right. So we recently went to a party. Um, obviously, women wear dresses, dudes wear suits or whatever. Women wear heels. Men don't wear sandals. Okay. That is not the typical thing that us as males do to a formal event. At a wedding. At a wedding. Formal event in general. Yeah. Even though I will say it might change regionally because like, for example, we're, we might go to a wedding in Italy and the attire is very different mm. than what it would be here. Because here's the thing. We even had an argument prior to leaving. You're like, can I wear this shirt? So Dennis decided to wear a shirt that his mom gave him. From doesn't matter where it was. It's from. like uh, Abercrombie, but, but it was quite cash. It was American Eagle. Oh, it was American oh, Eagle. There you go. Well, it, it it ended up looking very nice. But what I will say is, I was like, we're going to like a traditional Colombian ass wedding. <laughs> yeah. Like they they dress like funny. Like they're gonna put on the suit. The men are that that's formal for them. Yes. You know. So I was like, you're gonna look very out of place. Um, I forgot where I was going with that. How but. did I end up looking though? I think you looked okay. You looked good. But you, sh it wasn't the attire, in my opinion, still. But you look. What like do you say that uh, that is because 
you expect men to dress a certain way at a Hispanic wedding? I, I know what it to in their eyes it looks like, and I know who we were going, so I wanted to like um honor, I guess, and respect. Did you see something now how I looked? Or you just you don't know? But you looked nice. It, was it, looked was nice it the, after the green shirt. the dark green yeah. one? Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. It I also feel like to Natalie's point, it's an age thing because okay. I feel like your whole argument is yeah. like that generation mm-hmm. of Latinos. Yeah, not yeah. An, in, because for reference, they went to a, it was basically a vowel renewal for someone yes. that they know of an older age. Yeah. So I think it would have been very different for like the wedding that you guys are going to that's coming up. The couple is closer in your age. That would yes. be close, uh, a better attire for that kind of wedding but i, also, I feel like natalie would still want me to wear a no. suit and tie to the one no, that's no, no, coming no, no. up see the, if, your original thing was can i wear the white pants like very beachy and i asked that, you if i would i was considering that in japan and i was like that would be ideal in italy not in orlando fucking Florida. but, but now <laughs> i'm talking Columbia about the wedding. actual outfit i ended up wearing you still believe it wasn't appropriate no i i think you look nice because you you look nice like as my husband i was like your body looks nice you look nice and like whatever but i don't think it was appropriate for this wedding is my opinion that's mm. it and now does <laughs> do you think that was because kind of more so to my point about like the generational <laughs> thing, I'm just curious yeah. at this point. No, honestly, yes. But but also just the culture. Mm-hmm. I, more you so wanted culture. me to fit what people expect to be at those places. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. I'm the one that got the card and was like, you didn't even know till the day before we were freaking going on a wedding. Literally, okay? he didn't want to go. He thought that it was his daughter that was getting married. So you knew nothing. So when I saw I you anything. get out with that shirt, I was like, this is not what they asked for on the invitation it says formal attire i thought it was formal so that's why. but you know what i'll i'll give it to you you look nice <laughs> all right <laughs> so anyway now i have a question go ahead go go because dennis was saying that a man would never wear open toe shoes to a wedding what if it's on a beach <laughs> that's what i'm saying it depends on what a formal event for, you i didn't say wedding i didn't say wedding i said formal event that includes i don't know business meetings like just overall where you need to dress formally but it depends visible toes is not common all right common here here not a lot of people can get away with it is what i'm trying to say all right all right we'll give it to you are there other situations where one gender can do something that is not socially acceptable by the other Mm. that's not on this list because i know you guys read the list if not that's fine we can go down the list i mean i'm sure there's plenty of things i'm Mm. sure there's plenty plenty well, on the list, yeah. which we already read prior to going on here. You're having us think way too hard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're like, what is was um? women going to the bathroom together? Okay. Right. So that actually happened at the wedding multiple times. Yeah. Your mom was like, you want to go to the bathroom? Uh, why? Why? First of all, why do you guys go together? I can only speak for her. She hates like walking across a whole ass ballroom by herself, which is a very awkward, isolating experience. Yeah. Okay. When everybody's I literally agree. in a circle and then nobody's on the dance floor, and you're just like <laughs> walking. <laughs> yeah, it's just very awkward. So the act of walking is uncomfortable for through her, through the. Okay, I know that. So she's like, "You want to go with me?" But she's not. She's not the exception. She's actually like the norm. I don't know. Do most women not want all the attention on themselves? I'm not that woman either. I personally don't love the click clacking across the bell ballroom by myself. <laughs> okay. But I'm sure some people wouldn't mind. And also if I have to pee, I'm going to go and walk click clacking, you know? What about you, Serena? Do you like going accompanied to the bathroom? Yes. I usually go accompanied, but... Unless I, I gotta take a like, shit. Oh, very true. That is very true. I also feel like it depends on the friend. If we're close enough, I'll be like, girl, I gotta go take a shit. Come with me. Um, you know, if they're close enough of a friend. Do you guys hold hands? Yeah. <laughs> While Under shitting. the stall. While shitting. Under the stall. You know what I mean? Um, that was a joke to clarify. But um, She wipes for you? Yeah. She's so nice. If I don't have any toilet paper, she comes in and wipes for me. She's so sweet. But um, that's just me and Dennis's little shtick anyways um i feel like maybe it's also different i don't know like Mm -hmm. it's just the norm like we just go to the bathroom together we i mean um, one i think it's safety (laughs) i I was gonna say that too because i'd be going to bars yeah sometimes going to the bathroom i don't know it's just like a thing like i prefer all eyes like Mm -hmm. let's go two people together or maybe this is the way we were what do you mean can you explain explain to me by safety what do you mean by safety going to the bathroom 
So I remember your mom traumatized me when she was like, did you know that one of your cousins basically was at a club? She went to the bathroom and like, I don't know if got total like be slapped by a guy and grabbed while her husband was straight up outside. So every time I go to the bathroom, I'm like, Dennis, keep your eyes on me. Make I sure I go remember. in. I can't sure even I remember that out. situation. No? No. Ask her again, because I will never forget that when she said that. I want to know which cousin after this. Yeah, I'm pretty curious, too. I th- I could. S- oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just, Should I say it? Yeah, just Should say I- their name. I think it was the one with like the light eyes. I forget her name. And she had a baby recently. What's her name? Oh, Tatiana. yeah. Tatiana, yeah, Tatiana. Tatiana. <gasps> right, yeah. That happened to her. I didn't know that that happened to her. Man, this Maybe I just don't pay attention everything. enough to people. No, Dennis that's doesn't like hearing for- the family tea. That's not something you forget. <laughs> Dennis also just doesn't like hearing the family tea. Me and Natalie were discussing this. It's a just a bit off topic. But I feel like they get more of the family tea because he they have a sister mm. amongst the family. I have a brother yeah. amongst the family. That's so no one calls point. him to, to tell, tell him the him family tea. No, I know. No, I get it. But so that's why we go to the bathroom together. I to me, it's always been a thing. I think my dad also like raised me that way where he's like, just always go with somebody else just in case type of thing. I don't know. I wish it wasn't like that, but that's the way that I have never gone to the bathroom with another person. Obviously, another male. I never say, hey, you want to go to the bathroom? I got to go to the bathroom. I've gone with my mom. Like we go to the bathroom and then like we split up. I go male, female bathroom or whatever. But it's usually her. She asked me like, hey, can you come to the bathroom with me? I yeah. accompany and then that's that's that. But also for my younger years, going to the bathroom with your girls is like a way to catch up. Like how yes. are things going with so and so out there? You it's like, like mm. him? You want to ditch? Like what, what, what you need to debrief. <laughs> yes. The debrief. You need the debrief exactly. po- during sometimes you don't <laughs> don't even gotta pee. We just no. go chat. Yeah. So it sounds like Fix a cultural the lipstick. Thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's so, a it's okay. a makeup retouching moment. Could be. I need to make a point here. One time I went to a mall. And in that, it was a bougie mall. And in that bathroom, there was a whole seating area. Wow. When you walked in before you even got to the ah, stalls. Yes. Japan like, has that like yeah, a vanity section. Yeah. A yeah. lot of female bathrooms have seating areas. Beautiful. It is it's yeah. so nice because of sometimes we just go to talk to, amongst ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. Or, so, you know, sometimes a girly needs help in there. Another one of these is being touchy feely. That a lot of women can get away with being touchy feely mm-hmm. with a male coworker, but that it doesn't work the other way around. <gasps> I just thought of an example. Okay. Actually. Okay. Because yesterday I went to my hot Pilates class. I think I, okay. Sorry to the podcast, but Dennis and Sabina both know this. I've had a week where everything is dirty and I don't have clean underwear. So tell so that's how you know my life is not going right. Okay. Yeah. So I decide to go to this Pilates class without underwear. Like, <laughs> like as you should let her breathe. I was like, I'm let her not, breathe. I'm, just, I'm you know, I have my little panties, it's fine. But then Brad girl summer. But I go in and like the guy, he's like, Oh, uh, are you in this class? I said, Yeah. Oh, I'm your teacher. Oh, okay. So now I'm more uncomfortable just because. I don't know. Usually, whatever. The point is that the the guy, I noticed, this was his first few classes, he didn't really correct the girls the way that a girl teacher would. Yeah. You know, because I think... Because, Posture. Yes. Like, if you're doing something yeah. wrong, he's... he. Matter of fact, he's not even walking around the class because I think he thinks girls might feel uncomfortable. Um. So, the the... The aura was a little different. It so was a he's like more feeling shy. out the situation. Yes, but it was a little more shy. Usually girls come in and they're like chatting it up. And, you know, like I think he was. Yeah, I don't know. I just think it was it was different. So even in like a Pilates class, I'm starting to think that when it's a male teacher, he also has to have these almost like boundaries of like, I can't really go up to her and like correct her because he's a guy. I don't know. What do you think, Sabina? What do you, does that uh, hit close to home? You feel something similar in terms of like <laughs> no get close to home. <laughs> like, have you had a similar situation to that? I don't gym. <laughs> oh, damn. Well, you don't gym. I don't gym. Well, let me give you I a similar gym. example. Let me give you a similar example. Right. Wait, but then I go to the gym with you and I feel like you correct. Me. Yes. But this is what I wanted to say. I wanted to say this right with that. I felt like unintentionally he made it uncomfortable for all of us. Mm. because he didn't do what the other teachers do, which is walk around, correct. Like he, and it was his first few classes. I loved the instructor, but I thought that was an interesting, the aura felt different in the room. 
It interesting. Felt, it felt very different. It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. So he, but he, so he made it apparent. Yes, that he wasn't going. That it wasn't to. comfortable, and that he wasn't going to correct because he's a guy, and you guys are women. Yes, I, I, I felt that way. Maybe it's my interpretation. So we'll see if I go back to the class and see if that's the same vibe. Okay. But it was his first few classes. He did mention like, I'm I'm like a new teacher here. Yes. But it was very, very different. Let me tell you something. And I think that it's going to be very similar to the experience. Okay. Have you guys had a male hairdresser? Yes. Um. No. So the hairdresser, was he gay? Yes. Okay. He was my did, hairdresser growing up, actually. Did he treat you any differently than a female hairdresser? Well, actually, he's been my hair. He was my hairdresser from like the first man to ever touch. I mean, the first person really to touch my hair till I was like yeah. 14. Okay. And then my mom got some cheese men was like, we're never going back there. Um, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Can you expand upon that? Oh, that not was- that kind of cheese man. Like, like, él es un chismoso. No vamos a volver. Oh, uh, God. That, the cheese man was, he w- was a chismoso. Oh, no. I got, I thought the cheese man was <laughs> something, something odd is going no, on. No, the cheese man was, he was chismoso. Yeah. And like the few times I would go back, she'd be like, no le digas nada. Yeah, yeah. Él habla mucho. All right. I, I personally believe that a straight hairdresser uh-huh. would treat a female client differently nah. than a female hairdresser. Not in my because wouldn't it be similar to the situation of the hot Pilates? I'll be honest. Like when I've gone to my fitness class, like, like I used to go to um, F45, for example. Right. Mm-hmm. And I felt like the teachers corrected more, honestly, the girls than the guys. But I never felt like it was in a way that was like. um Targeted. Targeted. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm just thinking back to one of my friends <laughs> and the way she would flirt. <laughs> With the trainer. Rawr. <laughs> okay, let me tell you how it was. I was, so he's like correcting us, right? And I'm like, okay, I always say thank you so much, so and so for correcting me, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> and I keep going. So she was like, oh my God, it's just like so overly sexualized. She's like <gasps> doing hip thrusts and she's like, is it like this? Oh. Uh, and she's like, but, and after, after a while, she did tell me she had a crush on him. <gasps> And I was like, girl, not you straight up flirting and like almost eating him in front of me. Like I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. Like it was just it was it was too much. But I do think that um, teachers maybe of the opposite sex feel a little bit uncomfortable. But I don't think that should be the case. Like I think like I said, in the case of the Pilates guy, it almost felt so apparent that we all felt uncomfortable. Mm. Or maybe it's because I didn't have underwear on. I mean, I guess that this could happen in (laughs) any situation, you know, where a male and female are paired up and whether it be a massage, hairdresser situation, hot yoga, especially like that's like a a very intimate, sweaty (laughs) setting, environment, right? Environment. Yes. But, you know, it does go along with the lines of the visible toes in a uh, formal event. (laughs) But, but being grabby. I want to hear Dennis's opinion on this because he always asks us the questions. That's true. Dennis, what's something socially acceptable for one gender, but not the other? Being grabby. What is it? Being grabby. One that's not on the being list. Being grabby. One that's not on the list? Mm-hmm. I'm, you think about it. Huh. <laughs> Get to thinking. Because <laughs> Sabina, if you, if you go to her camera real quick while you're thinking, Sabina was over here like... <laughs> She was, she was rubbing was like, her temples and she was thinking really deeply about it. I know. I was like. I think something that's not socially acceptable for the male gender is to be wrong or to not mm-hmm. comprehend or understand things that men are supposed to know. Mm, that's okay. a good one. Yeah. Like uh, and that's not on the list at all. That's interesting. Like mechanical issues. Yeah. Like okay. it's kind of expected that a man know how to change a flat tire. And I do not know how to change a flat tire, right? That's a great point. So is that <laughs> acceptable that I don't know that? Like, it's kind of expected of me. Mean. Yeah, yeah. Right? I, I definitely sense that a lot as we were dating. And like, my dad's always been a very... Like, handy. Handy man. I didn't want to throw that word because I knew last time he was like a little bit... Because you're handy in a different way. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that. Topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I lost my point. 
But I was thinking about driving all of a sudden. Like, I think it's more socially acceptable for a girl to be a bad driver than a man. You mean a passenger princess as well? No, just like a Or driver. just bad driver. Why? Yeah. I don't know. Like, honestly, I'm going to judge you if you're a guy and you're a bad driver. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what? Like, I don't know. Yeah. I just am. <laughs> Uh, not to throw you princess. under, not to throw you under the bus, Arena, but you mentioned that your guy. Yeah, he's my passenger. Is your your passenger princess? That. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Can you explain how that makes you feel? Fine. I, I feel more. Yeah. I feel more in control when I'm driving, and thus I feel better. Yeah. Do you not feel like that urge to be the passenger princess? No. Honestly, if I could be you, I would like I would I would want to drive myself. You would want around. you would want to be the, I would the driver be independent like that where mm. like, for example, like I'll call my cousin Liza and she's like, damn, such a good parker. I just parallel parked here in Colorado. And I'm like literally me. You go, girl. Like, I wish one time I texted I Jonathan. Wish. I was like, look at this bomb ass parallel parking job I just did. And I, with the pickup truck, Yeah, it's because I learned how to drive of. with a pickup truck. It's something to be really proud of. I'm embarrassed. I only know how to park to the left. <laughs> Tell me how Natalie has to keep going around the parking lot until she finds a to the right hand side parking lot. No, to the parking left. spot to the left. left. And I will never park if there's a car next or like I'm screwed. I literally <laughs> need a whole parking lot. She's zone playing just Tetris. Me. She's playing Tetris in the parking lot. It's hard, guys. It's hard. Ugh, I hate it. It makes me have to park always far. And then I'm. Scared. I've tried to touch this damn topic three times now. Being grabby. <laughs> So okay. at workplaces, I, I've experienced it in school sometimes. Okay. Tell me. Right. Where women can like tap the guy's shoulder. Okay. And maybe like, Oh, you're so funny. And like, they like really lean into like the touch. Yeah. Um, or in the case of other people, one guy was bartending and that some women like reach down and gr- try to oh. grab them. Okay, that's not okay. Though. Right. Well, a lot of bartenders have crazy stories. Yeah, they do. That's the thing. Yes. But in the case of the guy, we <clears throat> it's a total no. Like mm-hmm. just overall physical touch and in any way comes off as potentially sexual, I Tina guess. has a story. Yeah, I do. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm scared. So on my sophomore year spring break, me and my roommates went to New Orleans and I got a little drunk and there were like police officers on the horses and I was petting the horse and I accidentally pet his leg. Oh. <laughs> and then the officer looked at my friend, my roommates and were like, get her away. And I was oh like, my goodness. But I wanted to, I was petting the horse. Yeah, that makes sense. The horse was cute. <laughs> There's actually a trend on TikTok where people go up to a police officer I on a horse that. and say, can, Lo I, puedo soar. can I pet you? And then can the, the plus the police officer says yes, but they end up petting him Men. as opposed to the horse. Yeah, I don't. I want to do that. Overall, though, uh, yeah, just some things are acceptable for certain genders more normally. Not that you can't touch people, I guess that you would want to, but yes, it also depends on your culture, I think, yeah. and your age. You so you brought up culture in the wedding yeah. topic, and you're bringing in culture again into this one because it does. Do you feel like it plays a big role? Hundred yes. percent. Like for example, even at the wedding, right? Yeah. There was a part where I can't remember. I think it was like Laura Loca, where it was like some girls come out and they're like dancing, and and they're kind of like in a little leotard, and you could see their ass cheeks and stuff like that. And I was like, dang, Dennis, like this probably wouldn't be a. Um, like seen as normal, maybe in a different type of culture, but because we're Colombian, like it's just kind of normal and there's kids dancing around and like my dad's dancing around, like we're all dancing around. Yeah. And I will never forget, um, I mentioned this to you that like Rihanna said something a long, 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 long time ago when she was being criticized for her dancing Mm -hmm. and people were like, why are you dancing so sexually? Blah, blah, blah. And she was like, this is how we dance in Jamaica. Like this is our culture. You know what I mean? Oh, Barbados. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to get. No, yeah. it's OK. I mean, <laughs> thank God. You just weren't sure about it. I That's swear fine. I thought it was Jamaica. Oh, no. When and you he, actually told me that at the party. You said Barbados. I, in my mind, I, re- I corrected you and I said oh, Barbados. So but sorry. I didn't want to oh, point okay. it out. No, but I feel terrible now. But because that's like saying Colombian is like all Colombians are Mexican. Not at all. But I like, mean, it's a, it's a to genuine. Me, to me, it kind of is. Accident. And so I think a lot about that. And so, yeah, I think even when it comes to like 
you know, kissing on the cheek That's what or I was, stuff I was like say. that, right? Like we always greet each other with a kiss on the cheek, right? Exactly. And then I think in um, is it Spain or the the double kiss, Argentina like, Argentina and Spain? Oh, ah, okay, okay, okay. Yes. So yeah, so culture really does play a role. It's the double kiss really. for men, also. So men do kiss each other on the cheek. Mm-hmm. And Both you know, sides. I also see it a lot. If you guys are Love is Blind fans, like um, I've watched almost all Love is Blind, like Love is Blind Brazil, yes, Love is has. Blind Japan, Love is Blind Australia, yes, blah, blah, has. blah. <laughs> and like the differences in touch and affection, you know, for example, Love is Blind Japan, they come out, they bow, they don't even kiss each other, nothing. Love is Blind Brazil, girl, they are doing it all. Tongue, hey, no. hum, like just <laughs> a Lar. little bit of everything. And that was, and then also when they go out with friends, the way that they're dressed, right? Like the girls are all in thongs. They're like sh- literally doing twerk like contests. Whereas it, it's just so culture plays a role. In a but lot of you did also mention to me that they were the most loyal and that the, the Brazilians and that they no, not mo- the most but loyal. but that a lot of them ended up going through with the wedding. Japan in my opinion was the most loyal in the sense of respect and loyalty. Brazil commitment. That that's what I meant. In the sense of they all got married, but that doesn't mean they all stayed married. But they all went through with the marriage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most but, of them but went through with the mean marriage. They stayed married. Okay. A year later at the reunion it's like who's not together and it's like oh. Literally. So <laughs> the Japanese ones who got married stayed together. Or were loyal or they, they overly thought it and ended up not committing because they kept loyalty like in their mind. I didn't finish Japan because I was so bored. <laughs> I was like, where's the action? People are asking people for permission. Where's the drama? I like shitty TV. I yeah. like reality TV. So Brazil was my favorite. <laughs> you should watch the year, the recap at the end just so you know. That's true. But no, I'm just not invested. I was so bored. Okay. Valid. So you said that you've seen a lot of the Love is Blind shows. Mm. Which of the shows would you say has the most attractive people? Mm. Or is attractiveness not a show by show basis based on like race, but it's more of like a, does it even, is it even? Is it I've uneven? always told you this, but you'd never believe me. What is it? I, I see beauty in everybody. Okay. Well, that sucks because the next question is, what are signs that you're conventionally ugly? Oh, <laughs> so you say you see everybody as I, beautiful. I, I promise you I could see beauty and like attraction in every single person okay. I can. What are some situations and you guys, I, you guys say I make you think so much, right? So you don't have to come up with an answer right away. Oh my God. Right? Okay. But are there any situations recently where you would say that your looks have helped you? In any way. If not, we can move into the topics. But maybe if they're surfaced there and in the top of your mind, you can. Something surfacing. Okay. Go ahead, just like pretty pl- privilege? Pretty that- privilege ish. Yes, yes, yes. That would fit. I would like to mention something. Go ahead. Um, I felt like I received more attention in my 20s than I have in my 30s. Mm. And something that I find very interesting from older women is they mention how they start to feel invisible. Mm. And I think that's such an interesting concept because there's so much that you could kind of get into it, but I have definitely felt less, um, not attract, how, I don't know how what the word is, but just less attention from others as I did when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's an interesting just concept in itself to live and to experience and hear other women feel like that as well. So, I mean, have you uh, experienced pretty privilege recently? You see, this that's the thing. It's I feel like it's not that evident for me because I'm like, oh, that person was so nice. And then I tell someone else and they're like, really? They were a bitch to me. And I'm like, huh. Is it because like I just question it? But um I definitely have received pretty privilege. I'm not mm-hmm. ignorant to that point. But I don't You can't see pinpoint it. a moment. Yeah, I can't pinpoint okay. it. <clears throat> I have I have a situation that happens. I have something that happens to me at the gym. Mm-hmm. And then you guys tell me if I'm wrong for doing it or or if I am in a position like. Yo, Dennis does get pretty privileged at the gym. Really? Tell me about okay. it. <laughs> I feel like women are more inclined to ask people how many sets they have left at a machine or whatever. For two reasons. Like people want to interact at the gym. There's always a reason for, oh, you're not just going to go and ask somebody, how many do you have left? 
at a machine. I don't want to interact in the gym. People don't want to interact. Oh, Either. don't want to. So interact. if they do interact, it's because yeah. they actually made more of an effort to interact. That's that's okay. my <laughs> mental thought process. Yeah, and I just want to clarify, I like interacting in classes, but not at the gym, weights okay. and stuff. If a woman interacts with a man at the gym and asks him, how many sets do you have left at a particular machine? Would you say that they are, do they, does it, first of all, does it have anything to do with anything or are they just simply asking? It depends. I also think it depends because it could just be, I'm a gym rat. Give me the machine. You've been on it for yeah. a while. Don't stop hogging it. Yes. Or I'm a little nervous. Maybe if I ask him, he'll start a conversation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, uh, Mm -hmm. I feel like people are more inclined to make conversation or ask someone if they're done, if they're unattractive. <laughs> so that's interesting. Yes. Okay. So let's say I needed to use a machine and I see either a guy that's really brolic and really muscular or a really pretty woman. I, I'm going to go do ask. something else. Yeah, I get it. I'm going to leave yeah. and I'm just going to go do something else because I feel like I don't want to interact. It's like a level of shyness. Yes, I think I it, it. I think yeah. it is a bit of shyness. Yeah. If it's someone who's not the gym physique, I will ask. Wow, I will ask if they're done at the machine or not. <laughs> Look at how he does face. I like That's your transparency. <laughs> and I want to be very honest. And I think it's because I am not as shy to come up to them and ask them, "Hey, yeah, how many do you have left?" I do think though it f falls under personality. You think not everybody would like, for example, let's put a Davi in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to ask, yeah. um, excuse me. Are you, you know, like if he thinks a girl's attractive, he's going to go up and ask. Yeah. It just depends. I think I if think. someone's attractive, I won't, I, I, I would actually avoid, but see, that is what I was going. Sorry. Just to my point yesterday. And I might've just been living this experience in my own head. And anyways, I felt like the Pilates guy was attractive okay and i yeah. felt all the girls kind of like and i was like this changed their buttholes the clenched <laughs> <laughs> all no. the girls buttholes clenched okay no but i just felt like i was like what's going on here this isn't the same energy you know yeah and that shifted the vibe of the class a little bit and so it's very interesting that you mentioned it because it can be in shyness like people can feel shy Yes. And like almost like. Mm. So. I ha I've never almost never had anyone come up to me at the gym to ask how many sets I have left ever. <laughs> but 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 it might be a situation. the only they situation. The <laughs> only situation was a man, an older man. Older men don't give a fuck. <laughs> Old men walk around the locker room with their dicks out and do not care. <laughs> and, and, and if you look, you're, they, they look at you and go. Like, like, oh, well, you looked, it's, it's wrinkly, whatever. That uh, is always says that. Yo. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. If no one has ever come up to, up to me and asked, how many sets do I have left? Is it because I'm ugly or is it because I'm pretty or is it like, does it not matter? Like it, it doesn't really I'm matter. I'm going to Natalie's point of shyness because I feel like since I lack confidence in the gym, like I follow Dennis around like a lost puppy at the gym. I'm like, oh. That's cute. that's literally me. But like, yeah. put me in another kind of situation. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I'm going <laughs> up to whoever. <laughs> my friend, I has happened multiple times. She's my the friend, man. She's like, you see these balls? <laughs> You're the old man in the locker room. No, literally, because <laughs> it's happened funny. to me multiple times. My friend is like, really oh my god, funny. I think he's so cute. And I'm like, which one? <laughs> and she's like that one i'm like okay let's go and they're like Sabina, stop yeah, and i'm like yeah. okay yeah, yeah yeah or like even meeting <laughs> my boyfriend i was just like oh my god hey like so you wasn't... you conf you're a w you confront the people that you think are I'm attractive very unconfrontational it's also i don't think it has to do with attraction i'm just looking mm -hmm. for friendship oh <laughs> do yeah. you tend to look for attractive people to be friends with or it doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't if matter. i know them i'll just say hi but you just said that if you if you found someone attractive like your boyfriend you said you went up to him and talked to him it didn't matter because of that he was attractive or not I, w I went up to him and said oh my gosh hey nice seeing you outside of duncan right which is literally what i said yes yes i understand now i get it she's fearless okay <laughs> definitely not fearless <laughs> no, i have many fears i think you're pretty fearless oh though. thank you yeah, what, but you're good socially what yeah. are some signs that you're conventionally ugly okay 
Have you guys ever been left out of a selfie? Have you ever been <laughs> in a group setting where they do a selfie and they do not include you in it? I'll choose not to be in it. Yeah, I choose not to be in it. Okay. But you know, okay, can I tell you something? Going back to the whole Pilates <laughs> thing. No, yeah. because I've never seen such attractive girls than in Pilates. Oh my God, yeah. They're attractive very girls attractive. are okay. equally as intimidating. And um, you feel ugly when the, mm-hmm. the teacher mm-hmm. is recording everyone and stops right before yep. you. <laughs> or just yep. like doesn't acknowledge your, your thing. Yeah. So I think that's kind of interesting. So one of them is that they got edited out of a work photo that ended up in marketing. <gasps> that so that bad. actually hit it uh, right in the, on the nail. Uh, they wanted to promote their company. Okay. Okay. Let, this is an example. I, I follow F45 because you used to be at F45. Yeah. What decides who gets on the stories and who doesn't? Yes. So here's one thing. So I have a friend who actually brought this point up and I thought it was fabulous. And she she is a little bigger. She is. And she admits it. She 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 mentions like she uh, how do I say this? Sorry, I feel like I'm walking on eggshell saying this, but really I'm I shouldn't be. It's kind of like the Barbados and I'm very cautious with the way that I, I don't want to offend anyone. But anyways, she was saying how F45 only puts fit people mm-hmm. on their and stories that bothers her as a plus size woman. And she was like, it took her a very long time to find the courage to come to F45 because of that. And because of that, they've actually changed up their stories. And I, I never acknowledged that. But when I was in the class, I did realize they, they would go for like the fittest people in the class, uh-huh. you know, for stories, for stories. They, yeah, it's like I'm right next to and you're like doing your burpees. <laughs> but then it's like the other people just like yeah. looking super, you know, Jacked. on it. And I get that a little bit when it comes to like um, marketing. It's who yeah. you want to portray. Right. So but but that's a really great point. And I think to her point, it helps bring everybody that also wants to be a part of the journey, regardless of the way that you physically look. You yes. Know? That's so, quite shocking. So, yeah, yeah, being edited out of any form of marketing uh, is a sign that you are conventionally ugly. Another one is people don't tolerate you as much. People have less patience with you. Would you say that that is also a sign? Has Have you ever experienced where someone kind of gets annoyed very quickly? I don't want to confirm or deny any of these because there's something about these that kind of remind me. I saw this TikTok about this girl saying how slick back buns don't look good on everyone. And she's like, all the girls doing slick back buns, just know if you don't have that face, that clean girl face, don't do it. I think I remember saying that. So then I saw another girl being like, my heart is broken for all the little teenage girls who thought they looked really cute and felt really good in a pulled back bun. And because of this one TikTok, now they're looking at themselves and they're like, maybe I don't have that Bella Hadid slick back face. You know, you kind of remind me of the whole like hip dip. Hit, uh, this there's a space between yeah. the leg kind of thing that you're, only these thigh types gap. of people can have those types of pants can because they don't have exactly. thigh gaps kind of thing. So yeah. I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea that like if you're asking us about this, yeah, that they're considered ugly, especially if they're younger. You know, like this type of stuff yes. can hurt. So did you guys ever hear about legging legs? I heard about What's it. That I did hear about it. Very similarly, there was a. I only saw it for like a week. I didn't people think it actually very long stop talking about it because they said that they didn't want to make it a thing. I remember that. That's great. So what is this? It was basically like, <clears throat> I don't even know how it started, but mm-hmm. someone somewhere was like, if you don't have this leg type, then leggings don't look good on you. Oh, like gotcha. they don't. Yeah. I yeah. Get it. Anyway. Yeah. It's kind of like, it was like uh, the gap, mm-hmm. but it was more, not so much the gap, but more the legs were very thin. Gotcha. And so the thin legs kind of created this silhouette yeah, yeah. that you, you, you tend to see in very athletic people. Yeah. And so they called it legging legs. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it could put you, it could put that's you interesting. So that's interesting. Cause when I picked this topic, I thought of it as a more funny I know you situational did. No, thing. I did. Yeah. But I think because you're asking us yes. and you're like, do you think, then we're like having to be like, ooh, you know, but it's funny when you read it and because those are personal experiences. Yes. Like the guy that got cropped out of a work event. He felt ugly. 
Yeah, and but that <laughs> like why? But that actually led but into you concern. talking about the situation where a girl felt like she wasn't being added to stories on purpose for oh, that yeah, for F forty five for F forty five. Such a good yeah. Especially coming from like a marketing perspective, I was like, girl, you need to tell them because that is so valuable. Like that mm-hmm. feedback is so valuable. So it, like I said, that's interesting because I have seen it from a certain perspective. And then now it seems as though we hit a actual issue <laughs> with, <laughs> with, with things. It's well, complex. really quickly to wrap up the thing that Dennis was talking about before we go into this issue. Um, the thing about like lacking patience, if someone's uglier i don't think that's a thing i think it's way more of a personality thing like yes it just depends on your level of patience like one time my roommate damn we're digging deep here really um my one of my roommates that i previously had this was sophomore year she just was like having a very bad day and hey i'm a yapper i'm latina i'm loud and she was like (laughs) speed that shut up (laughs) not because like of anything other than just like you know she was losing her patience (laughs) But she was like, I can hear you from my bedroom. <laughs> Shut up. And I was like, what? Oh. Okay. Oh. Did you feel offended that day? Yes. <laughs> but it's Real. okay because, it, again, it didn't have to do with like how either of us look. It just right. had to do with like patience levels. And I, I'm always, as I feel, I feel like I'm a very yeah. patient person. Whenever we get called out for something that we know internally that we do often, it hurts. Right. Like if mm-hmm. we like Samina said yeah. that she knows that she's loud and she got called out for it. And so it kind of you brought it up and it bothered you. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's okay. yeah. Yeah. We all have those things that not the first or last time bother us when we get called out on. Mm-hmm. Uh, people perceive your friendliness as creepy. When you're when you're unattractive, when they're considered like that. I don't know. I think that goes back into the gender thing, because then the of the previous question, because then it's like are they being nice to me because they're hitting on me or are they being nice to yeah. me because they want to be my friend? That's the other thing too, is like, the, the, these are very complex when you really yeah. think that's about what them. I'm saying. But I, the way that they originally were placed Intended was not wasn't. supposed to be. And it's because the topic, which began with gender ended up becoming like a cultural thing because of the topic of the wedding that started. Mm-hmm. And now these questions seem so much deeper because there is both a cultural and gender issue going into all of the answers. Mm, mm-hmm. So we're it's overly a thinking. Standpoint. We are overly thinking. We are overly analyzing these questions. But it's okay. Like, I think it's kind of interesting, you know? Like, I remember you just mentioned something about uh, when you're too nice, right? Yes. Something like that. People, I, people perceive your friendliness as creepy. Yeah. So. This actually used to happen to me where I actually purposely stopped talking to men because they would always get the idea that I was trying to be something with them mm-hmm. when I was just trying to be friendly. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I I need to you like that. I'm just being friendly. So I think sometimes that also could go, you know. So I actually started avoiding people, which is so sad. I got two TikToks this week. Uh, so the Olympics are about to start. One Olympian sat back down at the table with one of her friends and said that she had an interaction with someone in line and that when she sat back down at the table, she was already fantasizing about their whole life together and how this guy like interacted with her mm-hmm. and if <laughs> they're going to pick the right color for the walls of their what future the house. Heck? That's funny. So people start to create scenarios that obviously aren't going to happen, yeah. right? There's this other TikTok that I had seen about men who continuously go to buy coffee at the same coffee shop and how they think about a relationship with the person selling them coffee. The barista. The barista. So that's yeah. another topic altogether, right? So wasn't that like your story, but the opposite? <laughs> you were the man going to to get coffee. Yeah, I was. Okay, but it just so happened. It just so there. happened. Just so happened he worked there. The thing though is that when the person mis- misunderstands, then it becomes creepy. I just know Jupiter is going to be here in ten seconds. It's raining, it's raining, right? Raining. Give me ten seconds. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the baristas then eventually have a dilemma where this person thinks that they're being flirted to. And they're not being flirted to. The barista's just being friendly. That reminds me of a Grey's Anatomy episode. Tell us about it. 
that happened that the um, pressure on the espresso machine or whatever at a coffee shop, like kind of like went off and like hot water everywhere, burn thing. Cause Ooh. it's like a doctor show. So, you know, they were in the burn unit and this guy was like, please go tell the barista that I miss her. And like, I'm thinking about her. She does this cute little leaf on my coffee every day. So I know she knows it. I, who I am. <laughs> and then the, the intern, um, or well, the new doctor went up to her and was like, the one that you draw the little leaves for on the coffee. And she was like, I have to do that for everyone. Who are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do think sometimes like I, it's the whole main character thing. Right. Right. Where, how do I explain this? We are the main character of our own lives. Exactly. And we kind of overly analyze things yes. and assume that it's for us. And we're like, oh my God, they thought I was so attractive. Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. But like, maybe not. And maybe it's more just, than likely not. Yeah, more than likely not. <laughs> more and than likely not. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen those funny TikToks where it's like, oh my God, we're the hottest girls in the room. And they're like, yeah, we're the hottest. And then it shows like another perspective and they're both like <laughs> <laughs> at the bar. So yeah. so yeah, we we do. I mean, we're living through our own, you know, mind, which is why it's so interesting to gather other perspectives on one situation. Sometimes it's not the way that it, we think it is. Damn, wow, we got this deep. unconventional ugly got really deep. <laughs> Luckily, we're a deep girl. We have a very we interesting are. topic because it's Dennis's fun facts of the week hey. coming up. Hey, we haven't had this in a while. Hey. So there's a man who is now known as the divor- most divorced man in the world. How He's many? gone through 31 Whoa. divorces. 31? 31 He divorces. has to be rich. He has to be rich. <laughs> yeah. 31 rings. Only 31 five. Weddings. Only five of which ended because the spouse died. Wait, wait, wait. Say that one more time. Sorry. There's 31 divorces. I have to do the math. I'm just kidding. Five of them happened because the spouse died. So he was widowed five times. He w- was widowed five times. He killed his girls. <laughs> he killed them. Yeah. <laughs> and for the rest, it was just a typical divorce. Five most women most died? of which were teenagers. <gasps> wait, He's what rich. do you mean? What do you mean? He's got to be mean? rich. There's no other. Oh, oh there he is. Oh, Jupiter is here. <laughs> He's here. Oh, I hate the love. rain. <laughs> Anyways, He's that is the most divorced though. man in the world. Wanted to inform you guys about that. Nah, he, wow. he got to be rich. And last but not least, you good? We all good? Yep. Okay. Dr. Jupiter Pepper. Is the center of attention. Sorry. <laughs> Dr. Guys- Pepper is not considered a cola. Uh, so oh. they are allowed to sell in places that have Pepsi or Coke. Mm-hmm. Aren't That's they considered it. like a root beer? They are considered root beer. Yeah. No, no, they're not considered root beer. They're considered a pepper soda. And that's how they circumvented all of these rules that were there in place for Coke and for Pepsi and are now the number two soda in the world. Are they independently owned from Pepsi and Coke? Thank you. Yes. Wait, I, they are two. actually owned by Keurig. So wait, who's number one now? Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola is still number one. Dr. Pepsi Pepper got kicked is down? number two and Pepsi is number three. <gasps> that makes sense to me. I honestly get it. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know how though, because I did not We're like We're talking Dr. about Pepper. Pepsi company in total, including Mountain Dew and other things. So Pepsi, the company, Dr. Pepper, the company... Including more oh, than just Dr. Pepper. Flavors. Pepsi owns Fanta, right? Pepsi also owns Postone. And yeah, they, they are now number three. Anyways, thanks for tuning into this week's episode. We appreciate you. Friend. Be sure to rate us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And also tune in next Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. We wish you a happy weekend. Hey.